my impression, and this comes from my background in math and physics in university, so just in the math and physics domain, for why there isn't much of a paradigm shift in physics in the past 50 years or so, is because, well, firstly, we're talking about high energy physics, not just physics in general, like condensed matter physics has so much that's new, but it's not fundamentally paradigm shifting like quantum mechanics was. One of the reasons is that you have to become so well versed in physics in order to make a change. Like you have to understand the landscape in order to propose something new. And doing so takes up so much time that by the time you're done studying it, you become ingrained and you can't think outside of it. And you're also encouraged not to while you're learning. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, um, that's why I'm a college dropout. That's why I have this podcast. So we're similar. Yeah. That, to get a large overview of a ruck of different fields and to explore them in depth, that is with rigor, hopefully, but in order to make connections between the fields. Absolutely. Universities are basically conservative institutions and the enormous bureaucracies that administer scientific research now, you know, guarantee that no really fundamentally novel stuff can get funded or it can get published. The referees will never accept it. So this is not the way to do good science. But I think the politicians don't want revolutionary science because it scares them. They prefer to have control over the scientific community. You know, they don't want mm. another development as scary as the atom bomb. That may be a reason for controlling everything, but it's very bad for, the, for, for science to advance. You know, I, I think that um, Randall Mills is clearly very brilliant. I think he's going too far. He thinks quantum mechanics was not necessary, and he can do everything with his approach. Well, um, I can't follow his approach in detail, but I'm a little skeptical. Um, Maybe if if there's very clear experimental evidence, as there seems to be, that hydrinos exist, then clearly he's onto something. But but maybe his ideas, you know, can be combined with quantum mechanics into a richer into a richer theory. He's lucky that he came up with a practical device because he never would have gotten funding to do all the research he's been doing. The fact that he starts out presenting his stuff by saying that he's decided that quantum mechanics is is a mistake and and he's found another path is a little suicidal right but it makes it fascinating from a scientific point of view you know he's gotten spectrums out that he says are the spectrum of the solar corona there's the question of where there's not only the question of the dark matter there's a the question of why is the solar corona so hot where does all that energy come from and he says it's from hydrogen dropping into hydrinos which is the dark matter and, you know, there's so much dark matter. The most common thing uh, in the universe is hydrogen, right? So if it's all hydrogen, it makes sense. So I, th I think that Randall Mills deserves a chance. Yeah, but people should really listen to him. I, I find it absolutely fascinating. Now, the, the stuff on low-energy nuclear reactors, the lattice-enabled nuclear reactions, I think, is better. It's not as fundamentally new science because condensed matter is a very complicated environment. You know, as somebody on the um, Physics Nobel Prize Committee who looked at some of the work in this area said, it's a phenomenon, it's, it's, there's a lot of phenomenological stuff in condensed matter physics. And there is room for this new phenomenon to take place, maybe. Mm -hmm. So... He took it seriously. He died. He was an elder statesman, which is why he could make a, a statement like this without destroying his career. He already had had a wonderful career. The fact that in a uh, nickel lattice, if you populate almost every interstice with a hydrogen atom, somehow some of the hydrogens can turn into helium, this would not seem to be fundamentally new science, the way Randall Mills's hydrinos are. Now, technologically, it could be just wonderful, and that's what the Clean Planet Group is uh, betting on with government funding and a university support and also now industrial partnerships in, in Japan. But I have, to, I have to say that Randall Mills uh, fascinates me more because that would, be, that would be very interesting. And he starts with a piece of work done by his professor at, uh, at MIT. So it's, it's, good, it's good work that he starts with. Then he goes off in crazy directions.
the Japanese group seems to be interesting engineering, whereas what Randall Mills is talking about or Randy Mills is interesting physics for myself. I agree. I, I have the same point of view. Now, there's another crazy guy. I don't know whether to take him seriously in this field or not. He's called uh, Andrea Rossi. He has something called the energy catalyzer. Um, I think one can be justifiably skeptical about his work because Randall Mills has an organization that people have invested, I don't know, $140 million in. It's a serious organization. And the Japanese effort is involved with universities, industry, the government. That's a serious thing. But this guy, Andrew Ressi, just seems to, you know, keep all the cards close to his chest. He's doing it all on his own. It's a little crazy. But he claims now he had more conventional low energy or lattice enabled nuclear reactions much closer to Pons and Fleischmann already 10 years ago. But now he claims he's getting energy out of the vacuum, you know, out of quantum fluctuations in the vacuum. He has a new device. I don't know whether one should take him seriously or not because he doesn't really uh, publish. He doesn't reveal very much information. One demo that he did was, uh, was just wrong. He had a light bulb, supposedly. Well, anyway, he claims now he's going to have a, an electric uh, car where he's going to be uh, running, uh, charging up the battery with his, his device that supposedly gets a, a, electricity. He gets electricity directly, not heat or not light. He's going to keep the battery of the car charged while it's going round and round the racetrack. He claims he's going to do a demo in October. But, you know, he usually doesn't want to reveal enough information for people to, to, to see whether they should take him seriously or not. The poor guy has been working on this for a long time. He's not so young. There's certainly justification for a lot of skepticism. There is a paper he published, I don't know, ARXIV or something, someplace like that. It's not in a referee journal talking about uh, explaining how he thinks he can extract energy from the vacuum. I don't know enough physics to judge if this paper is nonsense or makes any sense. So, but this is just indicate that there's all this fascinating stuff going on out there outside the system because the system can't do crazy stuff. And if you don't allow some stuff that is clearly crazy, in the future, one of these crazy people like Randall Mills, Andrea Rossi, well, the Japanese effort is more solid engineering. But if you don't allow stuff that is going to be wrong, you won't find new stuff that is right. You know, you have to allow, or as one friend of mine put it at IBM, if, if a lot of your research projects don't fail, you're not being uh, yes. aggressive enough. You're not yes. doing real research. But now you can't fail. You have to announce in advance what you're going to do to get a research grant, right? So... So I think we have a serious problem in the sociology of science, and I uh, uh, agree with Huey Price. You know, the dark matter was clearly giving us a picture that we're missing something big, because this is supposed to be most of the matter in the universe, and we don't understand what it is. So clearly something big is missing in our picture of the physical universe, right? And the only proposal I've heard, well, I, I'm not a physicist, right, or an astrophysicist, but the, the the stuff by Randy Mills, um, I find fascinating. I, I'm not in a position to judge his reworking of all of physics using classical physics. He has four volumes on this. But, but he has 23 experimental proofs of the existence of hydrinos. He says he has them in a ball. He's had videos showing reactions with them. This sounds like the kind of thing that, uh, you know... Uh, a good experimental physicist could take a look at it and see, well, some of it has been published in Referee Journal, see if the evidence is good or not. I may have emailed Randy, or he may have emailed me, or someone may have, like, I don't recall. I should look into interviewing him. I think he's a fascinating guy. I think it would be great to interview him. Now, Andrea Rossi will not want to be interviewed because he doesn't want to reveal any information about what he's doing. The Japanese effort... They have somebody who does public relations, a lady who gave a good talk at a, the last International Congress on Cold Fusion. Maybe you could, I'm, I'm sure that, I have a feeling they would be happy to talk to you, or she would be happy to talk to you, since that's her job. And they, and they, they, they're going to, they want to market this thing worldwide, you know, uh, and they think they're getting close to that. So uh, those are two people I would suggest, um, now, I don't know them, you know, I don't have a, if I were friends with them, I could 
get you an interview with them. So you've got to break through the layers of protection. I would love to. I'm just not going to do it if it's to promote them. If I'm an arm off of their marketing team, I don't care about that. I'll do it to understand the condensed matter physics in particular. Yeah, well, Randall Mills, as you, as you, as you say, and I agree, if it, it, it looks potentially more revolutionary scientifically. If you enjoyed this Toe clipping, then the full video is linked in the description. You should also sign up for Toe Mail, which is again in the description and the pinned comment. You'll receive immediate access to all exclusive updates from the Theories of Everything podcast. It also helps me communicate directly with the core Toe community. You'll also receive my top 10 toes. Think of it as the intellectual version of Quentin Tarantino's Obsession.